uh, please welcome to the stage, and he will make the introductions uh, to his two guests, Andy Waters, Bill. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Are you awake? Great. So I jump on stage and I will. We have the crazy challenge we took on in 15 minutes give you insights and predictions on the TVOS battlefield. So, why do you say crazy? Because we have two OS in phones, two in mobile, and I think we have more than 10 players in the TVOS battlefield right now. And there's more coming every day. So there's a Titan OS uh, emerged like two weeks, three weeks, four weeks? How many weeks ago? Uh, it should be announced two months ago. Two months ago. Uh, Mission One, who will be after me on stage here. Um, when was it? Yeah, there's Mehmet. Similar time. So more people entering the battle. Nobody has died yet. We'll see. OK, so um, my name is Andy Waltenspiel. I am connecting the dots between technology and sales, thought leaders and innovators, and vendors and operators. I have two fantastic guests that you see here. I call her the queen of data. She's a rock star. She lives on a plane, I think, and all that with a broken elbow with a titanium implant. Big applause for Maria. And uh, then we got uh, Thierry. Most of you might know him from 19 years at Harmonic, where he's been leading the TV strategy, video strategy. He is the former president, not of France, not of the US, but of the Ultra HD Forum. And he's now the president of his own company called Your Media Transformation, with a very suiting tagline, which is transform or die. Big applause for Thierry. Good, so let's jump in. Um, many players, so we're going to talk about who's playing, what course is this battle most likely going to take, and we'll try to do some predictions, and in five or ten years you can say, you, but you said that. Thierry, you came from CES and you had one slide that got a lot of traction yes. on LinkedIn. Yes. Uh, that gave an overview, uh, an interesting one, of uh, the battlefield. So yes. take it away. So I went to a CES and I, I felt I would find uh, five or six uh, operating system. And the more I dug, the more I found. I said, OK, I think I have it. And I talked to professionals. They told me, you miss uh, half of it. <laughs> And then I met Maria recently. She told me, Thierry, this is missing. You have a few more missing. So I wanted to share this diagram, which is, uh, I call that the Connected TV uh, World Summit 24. And if you are good enough in finding out how many operating system, so how many do you count? So I, I'm wondering if you can figure out how many we have on this map. Somebody has an idea? Just shout in a number. Yes. Nobody? OK. Mehmet 18. and the Titan guys, you cannot. 18. I have 18 here. Vote. 18? I have 18 here. OK. It's slower than that. 28? So, so we have 17. And I, at the bar, I met uh, one of my uh, good friends uh, from Wear OS. He told me, I'm not on your map. I said, OK, good. So it's 18. And I think, uh, <laughs> Mehmet, uh, you are not on the map. It's 19. It's like the auction. We are in London. <laughs> So it's kind of scary, but it shows you the complexity of the ecosystem. And uh, I want to go quick to the second one. So I took the top five brands, and I said, OK, what are those guys doing? Very simple, Samsung, they do their own TV, their own OS, and they don't license anything. LG, they do their own TV, they do their own OS, and they have already managed to license out to three different companies. The three remaining one, four remaining one, are all using external operating system, 4451, 
if you want to play the horse racing, you have it. But it shows you that, for example, Hisense, very high consumer of operating system. And if you are developing an app, good luck to port on the 17, 18, 19. Maria. Yes, so this is, to show you, this is crazy. It's changing day by day. And uh, well, I, I introduced you as the queen of data. You have the quality, no, that was qualitative. You have the quantitative view, so please. Yes, we have the quantitative and qualitative view of the market. So first of all, I have to say thank you to the consumer electronics team at Omdia and also the great team in media that are here today. Hands up, the, where is Omdia? What is Omdia? <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> so these people are based in Korea, Japan, all around the world, and they know exactly the number of shipments TVs being sold around the world. Um, so at the moment, the number one the one thing common around the world is that both Samsung and LG dominate every single region in the world. There are lots of regional flavors, there are different players that dominate each region, mm -hmm. but every single region has a Tyson with Samsung and have WebOS and LG. Mm -hmm. And then this is uh, the global map by brands. You have some brands like TCL that they can use different operating systems. Thank so, you. Yes, thank you. So you have brands like TCL that they can use different operating systems. So it's not always Android. They may be using in the, in the US or Latin America other operating systems like Roku. Uh, so the world is complicated, not because there are lots of OSs, and there are many more than 16, 20, because 40% of the market are white labels. So they may even a shop or even a company doing a tiny operating system for a small city. So we have done the map globally, also based on OS. So we have done it uh, by brand and we have done it also by TVOS. And then it's Android that takes more than 40% of the global market. Again, take this with a pinch of salt because this includes China. In China, all these Android sets are not uh, addressable by Google. Google is not available there. And it's not the same value. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I can serve the slides with you. He got the slides, but that's so in habit in him. He He's so impressed photos. with the data. That's a good. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, so yes, in China, uh, the Android sets are not addressable by Google, therefore it's not the same value having a connected TV there that it is having it in the US. And so then, but if I just break here, so Samsung leading from a brand perspective, but if you look at OS share, this is 40 for Android versus 19 for Samsung. But again, if we remove China, probably as well the picture will be different. We can okay. double check with my colleagues. So, so that's the global yeah, That's picture. the global. So let's look at regionals because people here may say, oh, I don't care about China, or I don't care about global. Yes. What about regions by regions? Have I said she has all the data? Yes. Before? So in Europe, yes, we still have Android that's very important, Tyson, uh, LG, who have by the Hisense. And then you have other players like Philips, for example, that are very big in Europe and Latin America, especially in German-speaking countries. And we know, we mentioned Titan before, they're going to replace old uh, operating systems, the old Androids, with the new operating system. Why? We'll discuss later why there are so many. Mm -hmm. They know there is a lot of money in the advertising world, and they all want to take part in that big pie in the connected TV advertising world. That's yeah. why they will be replacing old operating systems with the new ones. North America, again, the picture is super different from Europe. In North America, it is Roku who dominates as a platform, because you know there are lots of different brands that are using Roku operating system. And there are, as I said before, lots of retail white labels in 2023. So if you want to have a map with every operating system, you will have hundreds probably there. Will they all survive? No. Uh, and then, again, as I said, Samsung is always really important in every single region, also in North America, and they have 22% of the market. But the interesting thing about North America is how everyone wants to be in this game. So you have a platform like Roku, you have a brand like Samsung, and then you have Walmart now uh, through Visio that they're also in this space. Again, they know there's a lot of money. There is no money selling TVs anymore. Hardware revenues are almost nothing. Sometimes you are even losing money. So, so you didn't put it on the map here. So Visio is now owned by Walmart. So retailers buy yes. TV OS. So w why do they do that? 
to have access to the whole uh, ecosystem, to have access directly to the user, so you, they will know everything about the user behavior. They can advertise, they can sell, so they will get control of the whole revenue by. And finally, Asia, again, huge country differences here between China, Japan, Korea, so this is a global picture. We have this country by country, and it will vary again, because there are lots of Chinese brands here as well, but it will vary if we do it this country by country, and I will be happy if anyone has questions to share more detailed information. And this is the reason, and yep. I'm anticipating you already, yes. why we are talking about all these companies, why everyone is launching a new TV OS. There is a lot, a lot of money in advertising, not as total advertising revenues, but the percentage of profit coming from both. The profit selling a TV is less than 1%. The profit in advertising is more than 50%. Another thing, when we look at the revenues selling TVs, selling hardware, uh, the whole world is very well distributed. I mean, North America has less than 25% of those revenues, 21 billion. But in advertising, although the revenues are uh, the same, 20 billion, North America, again, dominates most of that connected TV revenues. My colleague, Matt Vady, at 2 o'clock, will give you a lot of information about who are the winners in this space. But again, there is so much profit here that why, that's why they, will all, they are all launching new TV OS. So I remember, so 2017-18, I worked at Samsung on the set the box and gateway space. But I talked to many of my TV colleagues, and back then it was hardware sales, hardware sales, hardware sales. That was the key KPI. Fast forward six years, they finally woke up that the margin is not in hardware, but in services. So that's an interesting one. And there, and now we're going to look at how is this battle going to evolve. Hold your horses, Maria. Um, <laughs> this is network effects, right? The more installed base you have, the more valuable you are for the advertisers across the different geographies, in the country, and so on. But we know what happens in these um, races when it's network effect as the underlying driver. And then, uh, now you can click to the next uh, slide, Maria. About who do I think will win? No, not yet. Just okay. <laughs> forward, one forward. Uh. So, this is how such industry typically, this is textbook, right? But it's unfortunately very often true. So you see a lot of brands, a lot of standards, different things emerging, but there will be a peak. And I, when preparing this call, we had a few other Omdia colleagues, and I think Paul said already two years ago, he thought this is the maximum. Well, he was proven wrong by these guys and a few others. So more coming, but likely one day, and not too far in the future, we think we'll reach the peak. And then there is the tornado. And then we'll see. Maybe it's two OSs, like in phones, like in PCs. So maybe it, it's five, or maybe it's two per market. What, what do you think? In fact, Paul Gray, my colleague, he was right, because he did this chart three, four years ago, and he predicted that there would be lots of new launches in this space. So in a way, he, he was correct. Mm -hmm. And there will be a point, there are lots of launches, probably there will be even more. Are they late? Are they early? Are they, is the market already saturated? So yes, uh, it's a volume uh, exercise. So the minute it reaches that volume, the number of brands or TVOS, it will start disappearing. They will be merged, they will be acquired by others, but they will, it will not be sustainable to have all of them. It's a scale game. Those with the scale will survive. Those without the scale will not survive. So it's very important partnerships. It's very important brand awareness, deals with, with different brands, and that will be the secret to succeed. Who will die? We don't know. Hopefully nobody who's in this room today, but some brands, some TVOS will not be here in the next five years. Thierry, you talked to quite a few people at CES. I yes. mean, you, you mentioned the example of Hisense. They, they work with, I don't know, five different five, brands. Yeah. So interesting, if you look at, maybe you can go back to my, my chart, because I, I am not <laughs> able to discriminate between the 17, 18, 20. What I like, for example, is the most aggressive on the market, TCL, Philips, Hisense, they have decided up front for minimum operating system. And my take is because they are in different regions, 
Europe is different from Asia, it's different from US. So they know they need to have a different operating system per region. So three is probably the minimum, and the one lagging in Sony who is basically on Android only, but you see uh, Philips already outsourced uh, their operating system uh, to a, a startup. So I think it shows you the leaders, the two, top two guys, they are believing in what they do. They don't accept third party technology. All the others, I think it's uh, open, but diversity for sure. Good, we have 46 seconds left in our race to the bottom. And yeah, that's, it might be a race to the bottom. And that's our advice to the guys here and the 16 others and whoever might come. You need to gain scale quickly. But now, can we just go to the last slide, Thierry? Yes. Um, this avoid this situation, <laughs> where you go to the bottom, you get a lot of share, but then will be the moment, like for the SVOD players, by the way, where suddenly you need to make money. And you don't want to be here with Kiryoti, uh, you know what's coming. He will be there for five seconds in midair, and then there's a, an impact. With that, we reach zero. Uh, big applause for my two panelists here. Thank you.